Now we move to unit five entitled job satisfaction. In this unit, um, we have factors which would motivate someone to work harder. Uh, we start with the vocabulary, synonyms, and word building. We have an exercise number A, um, sentences that has underlined parts, where we do underline the words and phrases which can be replaced with an item from the box without change a uh, change in meaning. Uh, as an example, number one we have in it, if employees become too discontent, they may go on a strike. Uh, may go on a strike or go on a strike has a meaning, which is take industrial action. Number two says, most people like to have control over their work and therefore put autonomy near the top of their list of motivating factors. What's autonomy? Autonomy means empowerment or allowing freedom. Number three says, dealing with bureaucracy is a very time consuming, demotivating problem which affects large businesses and organizations. Dealing with bureaucracy, bureaucracy is called red tape, which means to follow routine and bureaucracy in uh, doing your things. Number four says, overwork can lead to burnout if not spotted early. If not spotted early means if not identified. Burnout means breakdown. Number five says, many job satisfaction studies, perhaps surprisingly, have found that often a compensation package is not the most motivating factor for many employees. What's meant by compensation package? Compensation package is what we call remuneration. This is remuneration, sorry. Number six says offering perks rather than a salary increase can be a way of retaining employees in traditionally high staff turnover industries. Offering perks, what's perks? It is fringe benefits. He received a very generous golden handshake when he left the company. Golden handshake means um, it's a kind of early termination of a contract. So this is called severance payment. Number eight says, one way for managers to monitor and develop staff is by using appraisal interviews. Appraisal interviews is assessment. An assessment is like a formal discussion process. Uh, exercise number B, it takes you to vocabulary again with verbs like satisfy, motivate, frustrate, recognize. They are being put in different sentences to be used as verbs, as nouns, and sometimes use their opposite forms. So let's see. Number one says the survey showed that staff working flexible hours were more satisfied with their jobs than those working fixed hours. So this is a verb. Low pay and poor working conditions create dissatisfied workers. Small European companies are top of job satisfaction league tables. So in number B, it was an adjective. In number C, it was a noun. Number two uses the verb motivate. What are the strongest motivating factors in people's lives? This is an adjective. Workers become demotivated if they work long hours for low pay. Demotivated here is an adjective which means they lose motiv motivation. What was your motivation for becoming a salesperson? Again, this is a noun. We move then to frustrate. You could see the frustration building up in the workforce. This is a noun. I find talking to him frustrating. This is an adjective because he never listens. I felt so frustrated. This is an adjective with their attitude that I decided to resign. Then we have recognized. Employees are more likely to change jobs if they feel the work is unrecognized, this is an adjective, or that others take credit for it. Because of her people's skills, she was able to achieve recognition and respect at the company. This is number B, and recognition here is a noun. The company recognized his lifelong service on retirement with a formal dinner and a substantial golden handshake. This is a verb. Finally, we move to a reading, a reading passage. Uh, the reading passage in exercise number E asks you to search for word partnerships that were mentioned in article number A. 
um, number E, number one says you need to compare various medical insurance policies online. Medical insurance. The government's new the government's new pension scheme is designed to prevent widespread old age poverty. This is called pension scheme. Ask human resources for the proper forms a month before your performance review. Many fathers don't take up the fraternity leave entitlement. And finally, number five, basic salary does not include overtime, bonuses, commission or travel allowance. Then we reach now the language review. We have the passives. We know that the passive voice is formed of verb to be in the tense of the main verb plus the past participle. Um, exercise number A asks you to match sentences that are being put in the passive voice, whether they are present simple, past simple, present perfect, past perfect, present continuous, future simple, modal verbs with passives or passive infinitives. Number one is matching with C, the present simple. The minutes are always taken by a member of HR. Number B is a past simple, which goes with number E, which says the performance reviews were carried out over the summer. Present perfect is number three, it goes with number H. Bonuses and other incentive programs have been cut since the recession. Number five is using the present continuous in the passive voice. It says it matches letter D. The survey stated that employees become unhappy when they feel that their concerns are being ignored by management. Number six matches number letter G, which is the future simple. Employees will now be expected to act on the reviews suggestions as soon as possible. Finally, we have uh, number seven. This is the one before the last, actually, the model verbs with passives. Uh, it goes with letter A. The report stated that more employees should be encouraged to provide feedback on management, should be encouraged. Uh, passive infinitives, this is number eight. Uh, goes with letter F, which says they were happy to be accepted on the fast track program. Exercise number B asks you to complete an extract with passive forms of the verbs in, in brackets. Over time, job satisfaction has been defined in a number of ways. Over time needs a present perfect passive voice. Edwin Locke said that job satisfaction is determined. This is a fact. So we use the simple present passive voice by the difference between one wants in a job and one has in a job. Then we reach Herzberg states that satisfaction and dissatisfaction are driven because again this is a fact so we have the present simple in the active voice by different things motivation and hygiene factors such as pay respectively. Motivation can be seen as an inner force that drives people to perform. One of the most famous ways can be seen as an inner force that drives people to perform. One of the most famous ways of measuring job satisfaction is the Minnesota Job Satisfaction Questionnaire, which was created in 1963, as long as this is something relevant to the past, so we use simple past passive voice. Some researchers say that people who are satisfied with life tend to be satisfied with their job. Again, we use the simple present to state facts or present um, uh, things that take the form of a habit. So don't forget that we use the um, verb to be, which is in the form of the verb being used in the original sentence plus the past participle. If it is present simple, it is going to be am, is, are, plus past participle. Past simple, was or were, plus past participle. Uh, present continuous, am, is, are, being, plus past participle. If it is future simple, shall or will be, plus past participle. Models can, could, whatever, be, plus past participle. We have also the present perfect has or have been, plus past participle. Past perfect had, plus been, plus past possible. With this we end unit 5 and then we move to unit 6. Thank you.